Hey guys, today I want to make sure you know exactly who the adversary is. It's not the Kyle guy or Dungeon, they're just employees doing a job. They have no control over the direction of the company. They're not the CEO of Wizard of the Coast. They're not the CEO of Hasbro. They're employees that get told, this is what we need to say butter the dumbasses and the community up and let's hope for the best the person in control let me read you off her resume and you guys are going to be a little shocked but let's be honest not that shocked that this is the individual in charge her resume uh, in 1995 to 2007 she worked at philip morris international in case you don't know who philip morris is it is big tobacco. So 1995, huh? 1995, Philip Morris, uh, one of the most corrupt companies, a company that was caught multiple times lying to customers, lying to Congress, lying to Americans. I mean, what is big tobacco? Guys, what is big tobacco? It is does it cause disease? Is nicotine addictive? Big Tobacco, Philip Morris, their CEO, was on record comparing nicotine to gummy bears in terms of how addicting it was. They had a marketing advertisement plan where they said, oh, you know, you can try, if you think cigarettes are bad for you, you can try these light cigarettes. They're better for you, which turned out to be false. Philip Morris is... One of the most despicable companies to work. I had a law professor and she worked at Philip Morris. I felt sick to my stomach every time she told us about how much money she was making. And nobody works at Philip Morris because they're good people. There's not a single good person working at Philip Morris. I, even today, you know, Philip Morris is lying to people. Even today, the Bureau of Investigated Journalism, Philip Morris misleading the public about nicotine and heated tobacco. And be like, oh, that was a long time ago. No, no, that was August of 20, August 28th of 2022. They are still, they are still misleading consumers about the amount of nicotine. This company, you cannot change it. Okay, cool. So she went from Philip Morris to Amazon. You know, I like Amazon. I use Amazon. But Amazon is not exactly known for employee rights or pro-union or any of this stuff. And the marketing Amazon does um, is pretty, pretty crazy. And it doesn't really pay taxes like it should. My point is, you guys have to understand, they hired her not because she loves Dungeons and Dragons, not because she loves Magic the Gathering, the two IPs that Kyle says they're curators of. They're guardians of these IPs, right? They gotta make sure, Kyle's gotta make sure that it's protected and safe from evil hands. Those evil corporations, which Kyle was part of. Nah, Kyle doesn't give a damn in order. He's having no power. He's just an employee. He's just getting a paycheck to say these stupid things. The person who has power is Cynthia because she is the CEO. Would we expect the CEO of Magic the Gathering and Dungeons and Dragons to maybe have played one of the two games? Maybe, I'm not asking for both, I'm just saying one. No. She is very proud that she hasn't played Dungeons and Dragons. She doesn't know the culture, she doesn't know the community. And I bet you right now she's surprised that there's a backlash. She did not play Magic the Gathering. Let me tell you how Magic the Gathering went. So she's been CEO for about 2022. We got a $1,000 booster box of proxies for four packs. That's what our celebration was for existing for 30 years, for the community, the local game stores, and the player base supporting the game for 30 years. We got sold online, direct to consumer, just like Amazon, a pack a box, I mean, let me be clear, clarify, a box, uh, four packs, each pack has 15 cards, and the back of the packs, or the back of the cards are actually different from the back, they're not tournament legal, they're not playable in EDH, which is our most popular format, they're just kind of useless, they're just, 
I don't I don't really know what, what to say. That was what they thought was a great celebration for us, that we would all cheer and buy this $1,000 pack and buy multiples of them. At one time, they were thinking, oh my gosh, this is going to sell so well, we got to limit them to five per customer. $5,000 per customer. <laughs> gosh, <laughs> they were going to limit. <laughs> you know, because there's going to be so much demand for this product. And there's no creativity. They just reprint stuff. Dominera Remastered is, as you can tell, remastered, which means it's just old cards reprinted. Secret layers are just cards reprinted. There's no new cards. There's no new mechanics. It's just a dumb things over and over again. So back to the Dungeon Dragon. Would we expect somebody like to be the CEO of these two IPs to actually be a nerd or somebody who played the game does Cynthia Williams look like an individual who has ever played Dungeons and Dragons? No. I bet you she still has never played Dungeons and Dragons, even though she's been the boss of uh, Wizard of the Coast for over years. She's appeared in Forbes magazines and has proudly say, I don't play it. And this is the difference between good companies and bad companies. Good companies like Pangonia, um, like uh jerky beef jerky companies i think that was in the comment below you wouldn't have like a vegan run a beef jerky company it just doesn't make sense because obviously they don't believe it and nor could they even tell if it's good or bad because they've never tasted beef jerky so if you never played dungeons and dragons how do you know this ogl is good or bad maybe you think it's financially good for you but it's bad for players let me rewind this to like have like a very generic and then go to specific details. This is a person who worked at Philip Morris and Amazon and Microsoft. Microsoft and Amazon at the same time. This is not a person who worked at a local game store. This is not a person who owns a local game store. This is not a person who is the head of a video game unit or something like that who knows about lore. This is a person who's going to maximize money at any cost. Her first thing to do with magic was she wanted to make five times, like again, like I said, we have $1,000 a box. That never happened. We never had a $1,000 product before she came along. And she thought, hey, this product is going to be such a banger product that we got to limit our customers to five apiece. Because all of our customers clearly have $5,000 to spend on a bunch of fake cards. And that's what the community realizes. It is a proxy. It is not a real card. It cannot be used in a tournament. It cannot be used in EDH. So basically, it's a waste of money. Things are really bad in Magic the Gathering. Um, a lot of stores are dropping the product. Um, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, I, I, get, I have a much better understanding of it at this point in time than I first started making videos. And the rules, again, you can go off. You can make a new set of rules. In fact, I'm sure people right now, the Pathfinder people, why rely on this? Why rely on this IP and why blow this IP up? Make your new IP. Give it really open forever. You know, make that like the first sentence, right? Hey, it's open forever. It's an open license forever. And then everyone leave this dumbass company. Look, man, when your marketing tactics mimic selling cigarettes to pregnant women and kids and saying that nicotine is like gummy bears. You know, there's no difference between nicotine and wanting gummy. The CEO, Philip Morris, said that, by the way. And they're still in trouble right now. They're still in trouble right now. Um, you can read articles. Lies, the tobacco company told us. United States versus Philip Morris. It took six years of litigation because they, they lied about everything. The judge wrote this about tobacco companies have marketed and sold their lethal product with zeal, with deception, with a single-minded focus on their financial success and without the regard for human tragedy of social costs that success exact. This is the judge ruling, actually, of United States versus Philip Morris. Does this sound familiar? Does it sound familiar? Defendants have falsely denied, distorted, and minimized the significant adverse health consequences of smoking for decades. They got this advertisement, said, I miss my lung, Bob. For approximately 40 years, defendant publicly, vehemently, and repeatedly denied the addictiveness of smoking and nicotine's central role in smoking. Nicotine is not addictive. 
in 1994, April 14, 1994. You know, hey, man, who was working in this company back then? Oh, Cynthia was. Uh, I mean, what, was it a year after? A year before? Or no, a year after. While under oath, seven tobacco company chief executive officers testified before a United States House of Representative Com Commerce Subcommittee, each testifying, I believe that nicotine is not addictive. Huh. Science would beg to differ, you dumbasses. Defendants falsely marketed and promoted low-tar light cigarettes as less harmful than full flavor. God, this is the worst marketing. And then I can grow 100 years old. This young, she's like five in this image, and she's talking about a doctor and about why she wants to smoke. Camel cigarettes. Ugh. Like, this isn't a person who is hired to help the community in any way, guys. This is a person who's hired to destroy the community, maximize the money of the community, and then move on. Golden parachute on. I hope you understand that this she is not for the community. That's why C is not speaking to you. This Kyle is speaking to you. Right? Hey, if you want to apologize, why doesn't the CEO apologize? Why do you send Kyle out? Who the F is Kyle? 